This is the Self Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. Mark Racklow, welcome back to the Self Publishing Show. Anyone who's been to the Self Publishing Show live will be very familiar with your story, and you have been on the podcast before. Uh, I've even visited you when you were living on a boat in Barcelona, but you you really are quite an inspiring author, I think, for the indie community. And so uh, it's time to get you back on because I think you've just passed a decent milestone, have you not? Yep, I've passed a million bucks, my friend. That's amazing. And that's, you know, you know, uh, I always (laughs) say it without the course at the Advertising for Authors course, this would not have happened. So your life has changed a lot in the last five, five years since I took the course. Four years since we met on my boat when I was, I think I was at $5,000 and I said, I can reach 10,000. I just have to yeah. make more ads and I have to we work say, more and it happened. We should say that's a month, 5,000 and 10,000 a month you're talking about yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. That, that is fantastic. And, um, and you are a powerhouse in, you should, we should tell you people what you write. Yeah, I write self-help, how to, so it's easy for me. I just have to do what I write about and then <laughs> success is guaranteed, right? <laughs> yeah, So, and they're very popular, uh, your books, obviously, as people can tell. Um, and you're publishing, you're, you're German by your nationality. You were living in Spain at the time. You're now living in Hungary. You're a true European citizen, citizen of the world. But who, who are buying your books? What, na- what, what nations are doing the best Most sales in the US, I think 70% of sales are in the US. And the, but the great thing is that of this 70%, I think 60% are in Spanish. So the Spanish, my Spanish Latino American readers in the US and in South America really have made my day. Oh, that's interesting. So Spanish speakers in the US buying your books. Yeah, right now the UK is coming. Eh? The, rec- the UK has discovered me. So that's nice also to see. And yeah, just trying to do my ads everywhere and it's very funny because i'm not standing out in any market but you know when i add everything up then i'm making a pretty decent life so yeah, yeah. that's that's a good uh, i think that's a good takeaway actually for people i don't know how many people focus on the spanish speaking market in the us because you tend to market spanish speaking countries but of course anyone who's been to the us knows spanish is widely spoken um and there's a market there there's a huge market there and i can tell you i know it's because of ads because before 219 when i couldn't advertise spanish books there i sold zero and now it's like half of my income so yeah it's definitely worth it i don't know in the in the fiction yeah. area that might be a little bit different i am lucky with non-fiction uh the latinos are very hungry for non for nonfiction, for self-help, for personal development. So that's, yeah, playing at my advantage, let's say it like that, yeah. And what ads are you running? Amazon ads. Still not. I started Facebook ads thanks to our friend Steve Hicks, who did also a fantastic presentation on the online course or online conference. Yeah, and it's working, but I have to put more money into it, probably. I'm still a little bit defensive. Yeah, so you've built this business on the back of Amazon ads. Mm -hmm. And I also think Amazon ads are getting better and better. It's just, I mean, I have no data or something. It's just a a feeling and intuition from what I see that suddenly my my ads are doing very well again. So I think, yeah, they're they're getting better and better with the AI stuff. Yeah, well, we'll revisit that in a moment. But let's go back to the beginning. So where were you before you started publishing these books, Mark? What was your career Oh, and finally, how, did, how did it so, change? Yeah, my career was, I studied a career that I didn't like to work in a job that I hated. <laughs> and the job that I hated was funnily in a book printer, which huh. I had nothing to do with. But now later, if I look back now, it helps me a lot because I mean, I had a thousand projects going over my table every year. Uh, I saw covers. I saw how books are made at the end. But... It was not my dream job. And then after 10 years, I got fired. And then I started writing e-books. That was my my revenge on the the paper (laughs) publisher. But then, yeah, with time, uh, changes on Amazon. So in the beginning, I was also selling like 70% were e-books back in 2015, 2016. And then suddenly it changed. And now I'm selling 75% paperback print on demand with Amazon, which is also fantastic. Wow. Um, and what prompted the 
the move into self-help books? I mean, were these the type of books you read? Yeah, I've been reading self-help books since I was 16 years old. Uh, complicated youth, maybe, childhood. Not childhood, not. But then, yeah, you just get into it. And I always was wondering, what is there something else? You know, it can't be that, you know, just like every weekend, I don't know, hanging around. So I, I read it a lot. And then I did a coaching training, a 200 hours coaching training in 2012. And there I saw suddenly all these things that I read in self-help books over the years came back, but it was a little bit more science behind it. So the science had caught up with all the woo-woo stuff of a self-help book in the 1980s or so, right? And then I saw also, and that was the, the initial spark for my book, 30 Days. There are habits, and if you do them, they work. And then I looked at successful people, and I saw they're all doing the same things. For example, they setting goals. You know, I never set goals, even if I read the books. So that was another thing. I read the self-help books when I was not doing well, then I was feeling better, then I, I stopped reading them, stopped doing the exercises. And then I also said, what if I would do these exercises also when I'm doing well? Like, do the goal setting, do the gratitude, do the one hour walk and everything. And then I noticed it, it brought huge benefits to my life and success. So success, first of all, success is something else for for every person, right? But if you want to become successful in something, there are people who have walked that way before, and then you follow their steps and you do the things they do, and then you can become successful. It's not easy, it's not quick. So that was something in the self-help books. The earlier self-help books, they always still said, yeah, it's a process, it takes time. And then somehow there was like a, a change and suddenly everything was get quick rich, get quick, get that quick. And now I think we are going back to the real thing, like with James Clear's Atomic Habit, which really says, no, it takes time. And it's like really the most important habit is consistency. And if you do something every day for an hour or two hours over a certain time, you will become successful. So I actually would say if I would play golf every day three hours, in two years I would be a decent golf player because it's just so talent is overrated. Talent is something, but it's more important to be consistent and to do stuff over and over again. And that was the idea behind 30 days to collect all these little exercises that can make our life a little bit better, a little bit easier, a little bit happier yeah. over time. So this was your, was that your first book? Is it 30 that days was to, my first to book, change yeah. your life? Is that the title? 30 days, change your habits, change your life. I yeah. call it 30 days. So it has nothing to do because the experts are, are, Mm, discussing if a habit takes 21 <clears throat> days to form or 30 or 66 or 180 I would say it depends on the habit and the person but so in the title I think most of the habits I think in 30 days if you do something 30 days it becomes a habit like some habits will come easier and some will take a little longer but let's say and that's why I chose the title 30 days also because it's a nice title. <laughs> yeah. If I would have called it 100 days, it probably wouldn't sell so well. So yeah. 30 days was like... <laughs> yeah, I haven't got time for 100 yeah. days. Um, yeah. <laughs> and you mentioned in passing a couple of the sort of habits that form part of a successful life. Uh, one, I think, was gratitude. The other one was walking. And there was another one as well. Can you just... Goal setting, for example. Oh, goal, goal setting. setting. Is, okay. It's huge. I never did goal setting because I think I didn't goal set because because I was afraid because when you set a goal suddenly you can measure against something and then we sometimes we become afraid of failure or we can't make it but we don't see when you have a goal you know where you're going and then at the end it doesn't matter if you set a, a one-year goal so for example I set many one-year goals I don't reach them in a year but maybe I reach them in two years so that it's not important to reach the time it's important to reach it and it's important to the process that you go through on your way to the goal so goal setting is a huge thing and and as a practice of the coaching training in 20, 2012 that was the first time i had to set my goals for 10 years and i had nothing i was unhappy in my job unhappy in my relationship but i wrote it's like okay write down what you want not what you think that is possible but what you would like to have in 10 years and I wrote down the goals and I really, I wrote, I want a boat, 
I want a Porsche. I want one book. I one book. I thought, and then after ten years, I nearly reached all those goals, and I had twenty books. I had my boat. I sold it again. I don't want a Porsche anymore. If I would, I wouldn't buy it. I would lease it. Things like that. But you, you see, yeah. I, and that was amazing to say. Wow, I really achieved most of that. What I said in ten. Ten years, and at that moment when I set the goal, it was impossible. So, what does say that? What does that say for us? Right? We can set any goal. Ten years is a long time, and we tend to overestimate what we can do in a year, and underestimate what we can do in ten years. Right. So that's another one of those things. Yeah. yeah. And then, is there a difference between targets and goals? Because I seem to remember from James Clear's book. It's been a couple of years since I, I read it, but <clears throat> he sort of urged people not to set targets, but to form habits yeah i think i mean that's, that's the, the thing so on the way to your goal you form the habits so he's right i still like goal setting because it works for me and then the thing but the thing is that so you have your goals in 10 years i want to write 10 books and then you you cut it down in, in smaller goals right what do you do have to do today if you want to have 10 books in 10 years so you have to write a book a year so that means how m maybe it comes down to today you have to write two or three thousand words and you have to do that for 30 or 60 days and then you have already the beginning of a book like that. So the, the, the idea is to set your goals but then uh, turn it down to habits, to daily habits. And for, I have to say I have 10 year goals, I have five year goals, I have one year goals, but my most important goals are my, it's what I do every day. And those are the habits that I have to do. To get to that will bring me to my goals yeah the one thing i do remember from from james clear was uh saying that um you know for instance if you want to be an author if you start writing you are an author and the moment you do that and conversely if you want to be an author but you're not writing then you're not an author so you are what you're doing um, yeah. and you don't have to have 10 published books before you can call yourself an author you're an author the moment you sit down and start writing a book because that's what authors do um, so yeah. you, you, you can control it. It's, it's this a simple thing that says you can control who you are and what you do. Exactly. You become the person you want to be, right? So yes. It, yeah. it, there are little tricks like what? So sometimes I'm a little bit <clears throat> unproductive, no? And then I could tell myself, yeah, but if I want to get where I want, maybe that's now two million bucks or whatever, which, what person do I have to, to be? Not the one that's lying on the sofa and you know, and doing nothing. No, then I have to be the person who sits down and writes 2000 words a day. So yeah, there's a lot to do how we see ourselves. And that's a, it's also it's incredible because it's also in the in the in the field of self esteem. How we see ourselves is is practically more important than how others see us, because we become how we see ourselves. And so we have to see ourselves also well you know and um, very interesting I, i'm loving it that it's coming more and more so james clear did a huge favor for everybody in self-development because he brought it to a huge mass i mean the guy i think sold 15 million books or whatever wow. so that's and people get more aware i think also with COVID and something that there's more to life and that we really can become the person we want to become it won't be easy but yeah. there is always a way you mentioned going for a walk as well. Is that part of your daily routine? Yes, that's a huge part. I mean, it's not only healthy, it's lots of health benefits, but it also clears my mind and I get good ideas when I'm walking around. And I'm just doing it because I don't like the gym. I don't like working out, so I have to do something at least to do. I don't know if you can call it exercise, walking around in one hour, but it's okay. Yeah, well, for a man who went to Vegas and lost weight, you're doing pretty well on the health side. That's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you did that. The, the portion well, services, <laughs> portion well, in, sizes. I mean, in, in, in Vegas, I was just not, it was kind of, I was not hungry. I didn't like the food, especially ex except the super food in the super restaurants. Yeah. But I have to say also in, in Vegas, I walked like 25,000 uh, steps a day because I was like, it was always like, oh, wow, there's the Luxor. Let's go there. Yeah. And, oh, and there is the other hotel. And then, and only in the hotels, like, you already make 5,000 steps just walking around yes. the hotel, so that helps. You're going that from helps. the bedroom to the exit, yeah. 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 Um, you're, so you're continuing to write books. I mean, it's in interesting that I understand completely from a, a um, fiction author's point of view, 
you know you're you're as good as your last book type thing and and your your best marketing thing is your next book but that works in non-fiction as well even though yours is that that you could look at 30 days to change your life uh, change your habits change your life as being a all-encompassing book that's the only one you'll ever need but you're basically are you rewriting more or less the same messaging in each book because it's a, from a marketing point of view you need to keep putting out books yeah, that's what my critics say. My critics say I have written 13 times the same book. I say I have 13 books. The thing is, my excuse is, of course, I mean, there. so in productivity, you have habits. In self-esteem, you have habits. If I write now a book, How to Become Successful, there would be habits. And many of these habits are the same, so they are repeating. I try to rephrase and stuff and get another like point of view on it, but... If you want to say so, yeah, my books are similar okay. to each other. And you could really, I mean, the problem for me is that 30 days is just so encompassing. It is really, like you said, it has everything. So, but then I would only have one book. So I wrote, uh, it, it, in, in 30 days, you can have, you have chapters about productivity, about self-esteem, about self-confidence, a little bit about minimalism, a little bit about people, people relationships. But only a little bit. And then I wrote the books, like I have a whole book on self-esteem that, of course, researched very well. And there are some habits because they're just the same habits and like this in my series. But I am, it's for me getting difficult to writing more stuff because at the end, yeah, sooner or later, I really have to say, okay, what else is there? Now I will write a book about money. That's And that's fun because also the science of getting rich, it's, Broadly, I would say 40% of the habits are the same habits that you need to be happy or to be productive because it's all, you know, it's all intertwined or do you say like that? It's all yeah. together. It's, you cannot say, okay, I'm, I can, I write now a book on money habits. It will def, it will have self-esteem habits in there. There will be uh, minimalism habits in there. There will be gratitude is everywhere. Because for me, it's the most amazing thing. Yeah, gratitude was the other one I wanted to pick you up on. So, so what do you mean by that? So gratitude, when I talk about gratitude, it's, it means I practice gratitude daily, five or 10 minutes minimum, but sometimes the whole day when I'm just I'm walking around, I think, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything, right, what's around me. Uh, you usually do... You write three, write down three to five things that you are grateful for every day. Like, for example, my kitchen where I can cook good food, my back that that connects me with the world. To see you, my good friend, every now and then is also nice. These are things I'm grateful for today, and it brings you, it rewires your brain. It it makes you see more of the good things that are all around you. So you really you become happier and happier. And it has a lot of scientifically proven benefits, like you're less prone to de depression, you feel better, you sleep better, you become more optimistic, which is very important for entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs also. Uh, you see more opportunities. It makes you see opportunities when they come up, so can, you can take them. And all this is what credit you does. Also, you can't be sad and grateful at the same time, and you can't be angry and grateful at the same time. You can't be... You can't be envy like you can't envy people and be grateful at the same time. So it's an antidote to all these lesser vibe uh, emotions, and it's like an, an exit. Hmm. So you don't have to be happy all the time. I have bad days, but I know I have an exit door. I know when I have a bad day, when I'm sad, I can I have options. I can be just sad because it, I want to be sad today, and it's a great day. And I'm, if there's something in there, you have to live through it. Or I can say, okay, I can talk, take now a 30 minutes walk because I know after 30 minutes in my brain, the endorphins and stuff start shooting. So this will be, or I can choose gratitude and can concentrate on everything that I'm grateful for. Health, for example, one thing. After when I came back, you know, when I came back from Vegas, I came down with like a, a cold. And suddenly that's when we remember how grateful we should be for health. Mm -hmm. But when we are healthy, we're never so grateful and, and, and we just take it for granted right? you write these down you have a notebook somewhere do you yes you write those down so people ask me oh can i make it in my head no you write it down. okay it, it's more there's something in the connection i would even say write it down by hand yep. with a notebook 
because there's something to this connection pen on paper to our brain yeah? and that's that's the thing it's so easy writing down three things that you're grateful for it will change it will start changing your life in four weeks i would say and it's not because i say there's <coughs> science to it and i've i've taught a class in barcelona some years ago about happiness and i the homework from the students was they are, every time they had to write every day these three things and i told them you don't have to write it out if you don't if it's something you are grateful for you don't want to share with me you write beep but you do you do and it was really like after four or five weeks when i saw the homework of the people and when i saw how they were acting in class it was exactly what the science also tells us like shy people got more extroverted uh, People slept better, so one girl wrote in their homework, oh, I'm grateful I'm sleeping so well now, I finally sleep through, I'm not so shy, I'm grateful I'm, I'm extroverted, and it's just amazing. So of And I get a lot of emails about it, so for me, yeah, that's why it's awesome. The gratitude does a lot, and it, it just changes everything, and it makes you also more successful because you see more opportunities. That's, um, that's brilliant. And funny enough, we have, uh, I won't say who it is, but we have a an older person in our lives at the moment and uh, they have a bleak outlook on life and literally it doesn't matter what conversation you come up with you could be talking about yogurt or a television program they will come up with a negative comment about it I don't like that type of yogurt television programs I don't understand why they have celebrities doing this and they're struggling with depression and of part course. of me thinks if they just did a false exercise, they, they will feel it's a false exercise of only saying positive things. I wonder what difference that would make to their... No, yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything. Our mindset ma really makes everything... That's not to belittle it, depression, by the way, which I'm very, no, very no, no, well exactly. aware of is a different, exactly. different thing, but yeah. No, even for me as a, as a coach, when I practice as a coach, so we always said if somebody with depression came, we said, you have to see a therapist, yeah. a psychologist, a coach cannot work with pathologies. But there are little things that help. And I worked with people who were depressed and they did these little things next to talking to a psychologist. Yes. Yeah. They improved a little bit. I mean, our mindset does a lot. And that's what you say, not to belittle depression, but why not try? You know, it works the, because it works both ways, James. If I would tell you now everything bad that has happened to me in my life, we would both be probably crying in half an hour because it's just because we concentrate and then you would re remember everything bad that happened to you. It happened, it goes both ways. So of course I say, okay, I'm an economist. I'll, how will I feel better? Well, I will be feel better when I feel good and happy. So I will concentrate on all the good stuff that happened to me in my life and that I can be grateful for. And there is a danger, isn't there, that we go through life. I think I'm probably guilty of this, chasing something chasing happiness or chasing something that's going to happen without ever thinking this is life this this it's, today is life it's that that's it yeah it's john, the old john lennon the old john lennon quote that life happens to you when you're planning other things uh, happiness is always now yeah and many times i was also i also made that mistake i was always looking in the future for it and i didn't yeah. notice it was just here or i think good or somebody said it's at your heels you know it's at your heels so if you stop finally it can kind of, it can uh, catch up with you. Happiness is also something else for every other person. So everybody, so I think reflection, self-reflection is also one of these great habits that when I noticed when I, I know myself now pretty much because I'm self-reflecting and so, so I can deal with, I don't like critics. I don't like it, but if they come, I can deal with it because mostly it's something that I are already knew about myself, yeah. you know, and then it's like, okay, shit. This person has noticed it too, you know, so yeah, but so at the end, it's how we deal with ourselves and we are our biggest critics anyway, you know, nobody will be as harsh as the guy that you see in the mirror with you. So yeah, lots of little habits that make life a little bit more fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's go back to your marketing setup. You you do your books, obviously print on demand. Uh, is it so? You do traditional print on demand and eBooks. You haven't had it done any sort of side deals or trad deals with anyone. I have a lot of um, international deals. I, okay. I send like forty three thousand. Uh, forty three thousand. Forty three. Forty three thousand would be nice. <laughs> forty three international deals. But I have to tell you, they also come to me. Thanks of 
my position not now not anymore but before because i'm going white i have gone white now so but before they came because i was up in amazon so the the amazon ads were keeping me up and then the international deals came now i don't know how they come some book is always selling somewhere for example my book how to become a people magnet i think it's selling very well in in india and suddenly turkish and albanian and in other indian languages approach me for for international licensing licensing deals which i also happily do of course yeah okay so you have those deals and your main marketing setup you say is amazon ads but you've come out of um exclusive you're wide now yes because last year they closed my account amazon and that was a shocker for me we are all friends again thank god but it was a shocker i mean it was also but it was all something that i always feared and I was not comfortable because I was spending an amount, I, mean, I was spending ten to $15,000 a month on ads. And Amazon was continuously like owing me forty to $60,000, you know, and that's a lot of money because I know when they close your account, you, you sign, when you click on a, agree to the terms, you, that if your account gets closed, you might not get your royalties, you know. Yeah. So that was always a big, <clears throat> and then when it finally, unfortunately closed because of a mistake, and they opened it again, but then I took a business decision and I said, okay, no, I don't want to have this pressure anymore. First of all, I'm going to go white because I want the least probable cause is to call, like get a, a bot saying, oh, we found now your book on, on Apple and now we close your account again, right? I didn't want that, so white. And then I also cut my spending on Amazon ads because I was okay, I prefer spending 5,000 a month and Amazon owing me 10, 20,000 a month. So that was the thing. So I got white, cut my, cut my ads, but now it has been going well for a year. So now I decided I'm going to up everything again. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> we have to milk the cow while it gives milk. And I mean, Amazon ads are getting better and better as I think. So I'm going to up everything again. And I'm, I want to go again. To so make where, the big numbers. Where's your main income? Is it still Amazon? Is that your main income? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. So my, the being white has substituted my KDP Kindle Unlimited income because I'm nonfiction and our readers are just different. So yeah. we don't make a lot of money on the KU. So for me, it was an easy decision. Okay. But it yeah. hasn't, your, your gross hasn't gone up as a result of this. You basically just balanced out the KU with, with wide, yeah. My gross hasn't gone up and hasn't gone down. My, my gross has gone down since a year. But my net has gone up, which is the really important thing, yes. which I also had to learn the hard way because I was always looking, you know, it was also that $25,000 is so nice dollars. Then it comes to me in euros. Then it's only 23 probably or 24. And then you spend 13 or 14,000 ads and suddenly you only have 10,000. And I have that now too. And that's the, the crazy thing, right? That one and a half years ago, I thought I'm the king of the world with my gross 25,000. And now I feel poor with my gross 15,000 euros. But at the end, I'm having the same or even over the year, more money, yeah. more money. Yeah. yeah, it's all about the net. Yeah, it's all about the net. Gross is for vanity, net is for sanity. And yeah. I chose the, the sanity approach now, yeah. And what's next for you, Mark? You gonna You got some more books planned? Yeah, I mean, the money book will come. And then I have one book, which... I'm very tempted to write it's about manipulation techniques because that has been in the last 10 years a lot of things have been happening so the many so I also studied NLP neuro linguistic programming and that's like also a way how you can manipulate yourself and others but in a positive way and when I learned it I always said wow this this is amazing I hope nobody ever uh, applies it a negative way but in the last five Four or five years, I have seen it applied negatively. So I, th I think I write, want to write a book about that. So to open people's eyes a little bit. It, so I, what I thought NLP was something therapists did with you. Is it something you can do yourself? Yeah, yeah. It, NLP is everything. NLP is something a therapist can do, but it's it's about changing images in your head, but very basically, yeah, said. And it's a lot about words. 
You know, the words you speak. Right. But, uh, Is it go, going back can, to what I was talking about earlier, saying positive things and being a more positive person? Exactly. It's like, you know, reframing, the famous reframing. So from in the positive way, it was like, I'm jobless. It's one way to something. And now another way to tell yourself would be, no, I'm, I have no new opportunities to develop. Same thing is happening to you, but one thing is I, you say, I'm jobless, I'm jobless, I'm jobless. Maybe not the greatest feeling in the world. Or you say, wow, I have the chance now to do something new for, for me. Or you can say, I'm sick when I'm, I get sick, right? But when I get sick, I always think, hmm, my body is cleaning. Something is in imbalance and probably it has to come into balance again. And that gives you an, a, a completely different point of view of the situation, what's happening in this. You can bring to the macro and that's very interesting. So yeah, I'm going to probably write about that. And that will be a new, completely new book that has yeah. nothing to do with all the others. Yeah. And direct sales is my big thing now. I, I'm When I'm in Vegas, uh, I saw that woof. So I, I really, because I have, I have been stuck at a certain level now for two or three years, and I never wanted to pay people to do my ads or whatever, but now I've come to say I might have to pay some some of the top guys to to go to the next level because I really want to try to get to the next level. My, let's say, dream. And then you say, when you put a, a date to a dream, it becomes a goal. So my goal is I really, if I could make 10 crows or 15 crows direct selling, that would be amazing. So that will be my goal for the next one or two years. I hope I get quicker. If it takes a little longer, it's also okay. But yeah, so I'm really moving also full to to the challenge of direct selling and see that's another thing problem <laughs> huh? problem yeah. challenge yeah that's yeah. the typical typical coach talk yeah so but it's like yeah when you say it's a challenge just it's not so heavy you know it's yeah. not so heavy yeah and also that's something else that protects you from other forces intervening if it's your own sales your own website your own deck direct sales you've got so yes. much more control over that if um you know uh, it's, it's, be a big yeah, player goes like, down in the market it doesn't affect you it's for me really it's like a lot of pressure to take off for example now about the money book i will probably uh, launch it on my 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 store and then i don't have to worry about the cover there will be no email coming in hey, this is a cover do you have the license to discover nothing because it's my store so do it, these are the little things that uh, has happened in the last two or three years, but they are, they are mounting to something, you know, lots of little stresses also make, make you more stressed. So yeah, if I yeah. can get those out of the way, it helps. Well, Mark, lots of takeaways from our interview. I've got my, my gratitude written down, which I think I'm going to do. That's a good yeah, thing to and do. You interview me so long, I only wanted to push the advertising course, man, because it didn't yeah. help me so much. You're you're very kind, but this is this yeah. interview is about you uh, rather than us. Um, but um, you're very kind. I know the course has been a a, a part of it, and you you did say, oh well, yeah, I tell you what we should talk about just briefly before we go. Um, you did say you were going to erect a statue, um, but instead of that, more practical, what has been brilliant is you have been a a co sponsor of one of our SPF foundation places. And this is a foundation we run to provide people not just with our courses, but with money to pets pay for editors via Reedsy and so on. And I think you've put $10,000 in so far. I put $10,000 in and I, do, I will commit to 5000 more which is minimum in the next two years, yeah. Which is fantastic. So thank you very much for that, making a difference to other people's lives. And um, my final question to you, Mark, is you, you are a very positive person. I love being in your company. Um, you know, you're, you're a good friend to SPF and I'll count you as one of my friends as well. But has it always been this way with you? Have you always been a positive person? Or is this something... Be yes, no. because I had to survive. Because it was the only way to survive, you know. So maybe one day I will talk about my youth a little bit. It's not the time yet, but it was tough. It was not easy. And I was questioning myself many times when I was 16. Does this make sense? Or I lived next to a train, you know, as I, or just end it all. But I'm glad I didn't. And then I, I got into the self help. My mom gave me my first self help book. And then suddenly my questions were, were answered. There must be more to life, right? And for me, I found it out. For me, it's growth. Growth, become better, become a better person. Yeah, distribute goodness. Yeah, like be. 
every person to meet you meet I try to leave her a little bit better than before they met me and that and that's it so but mostly it's selfish I just want because I know like the gratitude it comes back to me and and that's the thing yeah so I needed to to survive and that's why I become such a and I'm not always positive I can also be pretty bitchy and everything but my like main vibe is positivity see the best in everything there is in every situation and when you look back in your your life it's really like this whatever has happened or i hope at least in my life it's like that i look back to bad situations loss of somebody um, somebody died or even only an ex-girlfriend or whatever and i look at it now and i say wow look what came out of it or look i lost my job 10 years ago look what come out of it this my my life is so much better now than when i was hating my job and that gives hope for the future you know that you just learn you get over it somehow sometimes it takes longer sometimes it goes quicker but life is short we have to yeah. make the best of it yeah distributing goodness i remember that yeah. that phrase and i think honestly mark i think people are better as a result of knowing you better people oh, themselves. Oh, that's very nice. Wow. So that's, that's a nice wow. thing. Yeah, I, I hope, you know, we can't be a people pleaser, but I always think, you know, if I have something negative to say, I don't say it, but if I have something positive to say, I add. If it adds, why not say it, you know? Brilliant. Mark, thank you. Thank you. This is The Self-Publishing Show. There's never been a better time to be a writer. <laughs>